One may not remember much from the required educational studies of American poets. Names like Longfellow and Whitman or Poe and Dickinson may ring a bell, but few, if any, could recall a line or two. But if you were questioned as to the meaning of the phrase, the road less traveled, you could probably identify it as something that came from a poem. You may not remember the author or even the title of the poem, but more than likely, you will know how the poem ends. Quote, Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. The name of the poem is The Road Not Taken, and the author is Robert Frost. Down through the years, many people have debated the true message that Frost was trying to communicate through the poem. Some see it as the value for free thinking and personal self-expression apart from the crowd. Yet many who are more familiar with Robert Frost's work will say that he was pointing out the indecision of people when faced with truly inconsequential decisions. Now when it comes to a poem, we must never forget the old adage, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Personally, you may see the poem in either fashion. You may perceive meaning on whichever side of the argument or you can have your own interpretation entirely, and that's fine. But what you cannot deny is that on this road of life that Frost so eloquently describes, an inevitable choice has to be made. A destiny has to be determined. A path has to be picked. For every one of us, life is filled with choices, some more significant than others, but choices that nevertheless have to be made. But no choice in life is more paramount than what is set forth in the claims of the Christian faith. The truth of the Bible reveals that there are two roads, two ways, and two destinies. Destinies that are infinitely separated apart. Whereas many views of the world can seemingly allow for an individual to walk down both paths, all paths, or every path, faith in Jesus Christ demands that one must make a choice. Down through the centuries, many people have made this difficult choice. But few so brilliantly reveal the cost of following Christ, like that of a young Roman soldier named Marinus of Caesarea. I'm Ronnie Brown, and this is Forgotten. Valerian became the emperor of Rome around the beginning of the third century. He singled out Christianity as a threat to the Roman Empire and through a series of edicts tried to stamp it out. Christian clergy were to perform sacrifices to the Roman gods or face banishment and eventually execution. Many Christians had their properties seized and were reduced to slavery. When Valerian's son, Galenus, became emperor in 260 AD. All of these laws were rescinded and toleration was extended to the followers of the way. But that was not the case for the members of the Roman army. Although in the early fourth century, Constantine would cause the soldiers of the Roman army to march into battle under the sign of the Christian cross, that was not the case in 263 AD. In the Roman army, Religions outside the pantheistic Roman system were seen as being incompatible with allegiance to Rome. Soldiers who would not perform the customary sacrifice to the emperor would be subject to execution. In his writings, Eusebius, the noted Greek historian, briefly noted the story of a Roman soldier that was confronted with this issue. Marinus of Caesarea was from a highly regarded and wealthy family there in Palestine. He was also a devoted Roman soldier 
who proved to be exceptionally valued. He was a decorated and highly esteemed infantryman. When his commanding officer, through death, had vacated the position of centurion, Moranus was in line to be promoted. When brought before the military tribunal to be granted commission, another soldier came in before the tribunal and halted the proceedings. Because of his envy for the position, he charged that the promotion was not legal, that according to ancient Roman law, he could not be given the honor. He then followed with the accusation that Moranus was a Christian and therefore could not sacrifice to the emperor. All eyes were then fixed on Moranus. What was once the most exciting moment in his life had suddenly become one of the tensest. The tribunal judge, Archaeus, then asked Moranus to respond to the charge. Are you a Christian? With a thousand thoughts invading his mind all at once, seconds seemed like hours. The pounding of his heart within his breast could be felt all over his body. Before he knew it, he had suddenly affirmed that he was indeed a Christian. When asked to clarify his answer, Moranus again confessed to the tribunal that he was a follower of the religion that was so incompatible with Roman culture. Judge Archaeus looked the young soldier up and down. The silence of his deliberation was heavy in the air. All could see what was going on. They could see the envy of this indictment and that this was just a ploy to deprive an obviously noble and deserving soldier his due. But the law was the law. Judge Archaeus, not wanting to lose such a fine soldier, decided to give Moranus three hours to reconsider his response. Eusebius records that Moranus left the tribunal and was met by Theotechnus, the bishop of Caesarea. No doubt his pastor, Theotechnus began to speak words of encouragement into the young man's ear as he led him into the church. But he could see the decision weighed heavy on the mind of Moranus. This answer was not about admiration or embarrassment. It was not about demotion or commission. This answer was about life and death. The intended result of the three-hour respite of Judge Archaeus was coming to pass. The inner battle within the soldier's heart was raging high. The question kept ringing in the mind of Moranus, what path should I choose? What road should I take? Finally, the wise bishop realized how to make the answer clear. Theotechnus left the room to retrieve one of the sacred scrolls of copied scripture. Then Theotechnus motioned for the soldier's sword that rested at his side. Moranus handed him the weapon. Then Theotechnus placed the two items, the gospel record and the Roman sword, on a table before Moranus and demanded him to choose. Moranus looked at the sword, remembering how the hilt felt in his hand and how well he could wield its fine edge. But then he looked at the scroll and remembered all the comfort its words had brought to his soul, all of the precious promises that it contained. He was also reminded of its Christ, who had died cruelly on a tree, then to be raised to life again, a resurrection life that had been imparted to him never to be taken away. In that moment, it all became clear. He reached forth his hand and took a hold of the scroll. With tears in his eyes, Theotechnus said to the soldier, quote, O oh my son, keep that which thou hast chosen, and, despising this present life, hope for the eternal. Depart in good confidence and receive the crown which the Lord has prepared for thee, end quote. Moranus made his way back to the tribunal. A herald announced his return just as the three hours was winding away. With new confidence and bold demeanor, he stood before the eyes of the tribunal and the gaze of Judge Archaeus. As the judge opened his mouth to speak, Moranus interrupted, raising his voice so that all could hear. Quote, I have considered the matter, and it is established by the law of the fathers that God must be obeyed rather than men, end quote. Then with great zeal and full assurance, the young man affirmed his faith in Jesus Christ 
as the one and only true God. The tribunal judge was furious and immediately called for the execution of Moranus. Moments later, after he was cruelly tortured, Moranus was beheaded and arrived at his chosen destination, the eternal presence of his loving Lord. It is possible, however unlikely, that we too may be forced to make a choice under the threat of the sword. There are many around the world for which this ancient scene is not a distant possibility, but a very real probability. Their embrace of the faith once delivered to the saints is a costly one. But in the case of every person on this celestial ball, there is a choice. In closed countries of the Far East or in countries of religious freedom in the West, every person stands at the fork in the road, forced to make a decision concerning the identity and the authority of the man Jesus Christ. And the path you choose concerning him is the path that in the end will make all the difference. For Jesus has said, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Forgotten is written and produced by me, Ronnie Brown. You can find out more about this show at ForgottenPodcast.com. I'm also on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Forgotten Podcast. Forgotten is also available on various podcasting apps such as iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Downcast. Be sure to stop into iTunes and leave a review. And as always... Thanks for listening.